नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल येस्टरडे फेसबुक्स पब्लिक पॉलिसी डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंडिया अंकि दास रिजाइंड she resigned or she was sacked or whatever some people say she was sacked some people say she resigned whatever end of the day there was a lot of pressure put on her and she quit she walked away from facebook now the reason she left facebook is because she allowed according to uh, uh, some reports she allowed hate speech in facebook this is why she was asked to go or she quit now theek hai all that is very good so from now on what facebook is clean so there will be no more hate speeches in facebook is facebook going to be politically agnostic uh, that means facebook will be unbiased is that is how is that how it's going to happen now on so what exactly will happen after ankita quits what changes are we going to see number 1 number 2 is uh, okay facebook theek hai they carried the hate speech and and uh, and uh, one top brass got sacked what about our local channels what about our uh, news mainline news media a lot of them carry hate speech what's going to happen to them so our laws specifically for facebook because they are a foreign company so are we bullying a foreign company in india because theek hai yaar they are easy and uh, nothing seems to be happening to the mainline channels Who also seem to be carrying same amount of hate. So that's my question tonight, and I have got a very special guest, eminent journalist, a very senior journalist, author, uh, and a person who wrote the first book on Facebook in India. He wrote his book called "The Real Face of Facebook in India." He wrote this last year, April two thousand nineteen, and uh, let's ask him whether these action. proposed action on facebook is it going to solve all the hate speeches in india or are we bullying facebook because it's a foreign company let's get right into the show paranjoy thank you so much for joining me on my show what a pleasure to have you Thank you so much, Sujit. It's my honor, my privilege to appear on your program. Paranjay, let's get straight into the question. Anki Das resigned yesterday. She resigned because of the controversies, the hate speech controversy. Tell me, uh, Paranjay, as a layman, I want to understand what did Anki Das do wrong? Anki Das officially resigned voluntarily. Officially. but everybody and his brother knows that there was a lot of pressure on her from various people to resign why because of a number of reasons and in the i let me take this occasion to also plug my own book we were among the first people to me and cyril sam the two of us we wrote a series of articles for news click in november 2018 and then in april of 2019 we we published this book we published the real face of facebook in india mm-hmm. and how social media have become a propaganda weapon and disseminator of disinformation and falsehood i mean the book was also simultaneously published in hindi and and also later on shabd books published the marathi edition of the book mm-hmm. now what had happened is we outlined how akhidas among others among uh, including now her successor shivnath tokral had been working very closely with mr narendra modi even before he became the prime minister and and then uh, i mean while when he was chief minister of gujarat now what has happened is from the middle of august onwards there have been a series of articles in wall street journal in time in buzz feed in the indian express in 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 aussie.com all of them showing how akhidas was actually not wanting to put down hateful posts by individuals associated with the bhartiya janata party because and this is what the internal emails that were leaked disclose 
because she felt it would be bad for business as far as Facebook is concerned. Now, it was only after Wall Street Journal time sent them a series of questions that very belatedly they acted to put down hateful uh, posts by, by individuals like T. Raja Singh, member of the Legislative Assembly of Telangana, Kapil Mishra, uh, uh, Anand, Anand Kumar Hegde, among others. Now, all of this shows that there was a lot of pressure on Facebook from within. And then I, I, I dare say that even uh, Aki Das's mentor in Menlo Park in, 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 in California, uh, they also want to ensure that, you know, uh, I mean, they remain on the right right side. Correct. Now, Facebook is supposed to be agnostic. It's supposed to be neutral. But our own research and the research by all these media organizations clearly show they were biased, heavily biased in favor of India's ruling dispensation. So that's why Akhidas became a controversial person. And and, uh, and there were internal emails that were leaked, which, which made her political preferences very, very, very clear. And, and, and in fact, on one occasion, she even apologized for a post that could have been perceived to be anti-Muslim. Paranjoy, I, my, my question still remains. What did Ankhidas do wrong? And I'll tell you why I asked this question. Ankhidas' job was to lobby for Facebook. Her job was also as a regulator. So if you have a person who is supposed to lobby for the company with the government and that same person is supposed to regulate the, 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 the content of the channel, what are you expecting? So didn't Facebook really know that Ankhidas would have to do favors for the government? If Facebook knew that Ankhidas had to do favors for the, to the, for the government, isn't, it, isn't she a scapegoat now? Finally. Look, let's be very clear. Aki Das had a particular political preference or a political predilection. Has she done anything wrong? Facebook says she's done nothing wrong. She herself believes she's done nothing wrong. Now, the question is a little different. The point is, Aki Das and Facebook claim that they are a neutral platform. Form, that they are politically agnostic, that they, they do not discriminate against one particular party. But the history of Facebook shows that Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg and their top brass have across the world in Myanmar, in, in, in different parts of the world, in, 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 in different parts of the world, including in the US, has often been accused of favoring not just the ruling dispensations in all these countries, uh, but also right wing. The, the, I mean, that uh, right wing views. Now, now, we have in India, even uh, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, the information and, and broadcasting minister saying that, no, no, actually, Facebook is biased against the right wing in favor of the left wing. The point is, I'll return to your question. Akhidas doesn't think she has done anything wrong. Facebook, too, officially doesn't think there's anything wrong. She may have made a mistake for which she supposedly uh, uh, apologized. Uh, internally, many uh, uh, instances where hateful speech was not put down have been pointed out, but then subsequently they brought it down. Paranjoy, but wait. Paranjoy I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt yes. you. I'm extremely sorry to interrupt you, but I want to ask a point here. I'm saying let us keep Akidas and Facebook as two separate identities. But how can you? Currently, Facebook is continuing in India the way it is. Akhidas resigned. My point is, how can Akhidas solely be responsible for whatever happened, the hate speech? Why are we why are we holding her solely responsible? Because it was her job given by uh, Facebook to lobby for Facebook with the government. So I, I agree with you. Yeah. I'm not at all in disagreement with you. I am sure that everything that she did and everything that Shivnath Tukral did, who has succeeded her and was in the, I mean, the full knowledge and even consent of the top brass Correct. within India. Mr. Ajit Mohan has not been around as long as Ms. Aki Thas has been around. But she, remember, she's holding a very critical position right now. I mean, until she resigned, she was technically the second in command. Correct. But even earlier, there were brief periods when she was actually the most powerful individual in Facebook's India operations. But wait, you are completely right. I have every reason to believe, though it will never, ever be acknowledged by the big, big bosses of Facebook in Menlo Park, California, that whatever she did was not only 
uh, the, the, the top brass of Facebook was fully aware, but they possibly uh, even tacitly acknowledged. Now, now the point that is interesting is she has been accused by Facebook's own employees of violating Facebook's own community standards. So this is not just violating the Indian Penal Code or the Code of Criminal Procedure as far as hate speech or incendiary speech or, 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 or hateful speech is concerned. So, so that's, that's an interesting kind of an anomaly that we see. Now, uh, Paranjoy, let's come to Facebook. Let's come to Facebook. Facebook has violated uh, the, the, the laws. Uh, Facebook allowed hate speech to be carried on in their platform. Fair enough. But hasn't our television fair channels enough. done the same? Not fair enough. Nothing was fair. No, I'm saying, no, no, it is right. It is right. What, what, the, 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 and it's obviously wrong. after it was pointed out, after there was pressure, in certain instances, they, they pulled down those pages, they stopped those pages. Correct. Yes, continue. Correct. But tell me, haven't our television channels been doing the same? Absolutely. Why are we not so enthusiastic about or why are we not so critical about our television channels? Not one single television channel has come out and actually apologized for what they have said. Including certain television channels who ran programs like uh, uh, IAS Jihad or some, you know, those kinds of programs. Nobody has come and apologized. At least are we bullying uh, Facebook just because they are a foreigner? Not at all. Not at all. Facebook is not just a foreigner. I mean, I mean look at it. Facebook is among the biggest corporate conglomerates on the planet at present. Correct. If, yeah. you, if you just go by its sheer size in terms of turnover, it's bigger than the GDP uh, of many, many countries. Even though the organization is barely a little over 17 years old, even if the founder, Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, is, uh, uh, I think he's about, what, uh, 36, uh, 37? 36, 36, uh, sorry, my, yes. I mean, whatever it is. The point yeah. is, Indian television channels or certain in Indian television channels have been toxic. They've not just spread disinformation, they've spread hatred. Correct. But Sujit, Sujit, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, it, it, it's a bit like saying you had uh, anti-Sikh riots in November 1984, then you had anti-Muslim riots in Gujarat and, and, and therefore, you know, one cancels the other. No. The second point that I want to do in, in response to your question a lot of the toxicity that you see in television channels, and I don't mind naming some of them, you know, why not name Republic Television as, as a classic case, but you see a huge amount of toxic information on the social media. Why? There is anonymity among for the people who disseminate it and those who receive it. There's end-to-end -end encryption. And even when heinous crimes are committed, as in the case of uh, a person who was, uh, who's, who's, who's killing in Raj Saman, was shown on 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 Facebook uh, on on WhatsApp. You know, so WhatsApp is part of Facebook. That's the first point. Look, look in terms of sheer size, they're huge. You know, we have here in this in this country uh, uh, a population of somewhere in the uh, over 135 crore, uh, 1.35 billion, according to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. You have SIMs or subscriber subscriber identity modules in the region of about 1.15 billion, 150 crores. You have 90 crore. We, uh, voters or people eligible to vote and you have about 70 75 crore 750 million cellular phones and of them at more than half are today internet enabled and whatsapp look at this india is the biggest market they have 40 crore of four for 400 million subscribers so they claim i'm not saying it the face uh, whatsapp says that facebook has somewhere in the region of 30 crore or 300 million User. So they're huge in terms of the media. They're huge. So just as we need to be critical of all the toxic content, all the disinformation, all the hateful stuff that is put out by certain television channels, we should be equally critical, if not more critical of Facebook and WhatsApp because of their sheer size and the, 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 the sheer speed and the sheer scale at which they are capable of disseminating disinformation, lies, half-truth, untruths, misinformation. I mean, they become a, a weapon of disinformation. Paranjoy, Paranjoy, uh, nobody condones Facebook. Obviously, none of us condones Facebook and none of us condone uh, hate speeches. 
the point that uh, one is trying to make here Paranjoy is somewhere down the line because Facebook has uh, 300 million subscribers in India that does not make Facebook a larger villain than possibly another television channel that does equal number of uh, uh, hate uh, speeches, equal number of programs which are filled with hate, which, which just spread venom in the country. I don't think that was justified is all I wanted to say. That being I said... I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you at all. That being but said... Since, that since we are talking, uh, since the topic of our discussion was Aki Das and Facebook, correct. we focus on that. Correct, but, correct. Which is not to say that these television channels are, 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 are sort of innocent. Far from it. They've been as culpable as... Uh, responsible for, for demonizing one seventh of our country's population for spreading hateful incendiary information. Correct, correct. Now, now let's go to the next uh, part of my our conversation. You see, somewhere down the line, do don't you think that the laws that we have in India for hate speeches, communal uh, speeches, the laws that we are for, have in India are not strict enough or are not implemented? If they are strict enough, uh, don't you think there is a problem there? Because I'll give you an example. Facebook rules in Germany are very different to Facebook rules in United States. And they are very different to Facebook rules in India. Germany ensures that Facebook is very, very strict there. Which United States is a little more uh, 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 liberal. So the point is somewhere down the line, don't you think that all, all of this also is because of our rules, the, the fact that India doesn't have strict rules. <coughs> let, let me try and react to what you said. First point is belatedly Facebook even put down certain posts or blocked certain posts that were put by Holocaust deniers, which was a, a problem uh, they faced in Germany, among other countries. In India is a different set of problems. Firstly, Facebook's community standards who is responsible for implement? Who is responsible for ensuring that these are properly adhered to? Nobody really knows. There's a huge amount of opacity. There is lack of transparency. So we don't know whether A or B or C or D is the person responsible for enforcing and implementing Facebook's own community standards. Now, Facebook's own community standards. Let's come to the law of the land. Whether it be the Indian Penal Code or whether it be the Code of Criminal Procedure, when it comes to issues of hateful speech spreading, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, information that creates disharmony among different social sect, uh, social classes, social groups, religious groups. There is the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. The law exists, but I regret to say in the recent past, the law has been rather selectively applied and often not properly implemented. That's part of a bigger problem. And, and that's a part of the bigger problem of why Indian, uh, why there's so much in, in Islamophobia in India and why so much toxicity has exist, uh, is, is there in, in this country. So the point that should be noted is that we have to separate. Facebook believes it's a law unto itself. Uh, and, and, and I mean, unfortunately, I mean, they, uh, uh, you know, the number of occasions they had to appear before committees of lawmakers in the United States where they have been grilled. The interesting part of the whole story, one part is the lack of implementation or the lack of uh, the way Indian laws are applied as far as hate speech is concerned. The other side of the story is that Facebook justifies its action ironically in the name of privacy and freedom of expression. Just as many hateful challenges in this country also do, including Sudarshan TV. So this is the irony of it all. Facebook is the first to invoke the First Amendment of the Constitution of the US and talk about privacy to justify whatever it does or does not do. Now let's wait and watch. Uh, there is an antitrust uh, uh, action that has been uh, bipartisan, Republicans, Dem Democrats against Google. Whether similar action will be taken against Facebook, I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, there is a view in different parts of the world, including in the U United States, that Facebook has become too, too big. And therefore, it needs to be fragmented into smaller segments. Uh, you remember Standard Oil of the Rockefellers had, yes. had been broken up. Uh, 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 
Alexander Graham Bell's company, Bell, uh, AT&T, American Telephone and Telegraph, was broken up. Time alone will tell. I mean, if you read what Shoshana Zuboff has written in her book on surveil uh, titled Surveillance Capitalism, if you see the Netflix documentary called The Social Dilemma, and even earlier before that, you know, the great hack about how Cambridge Analytica stole data. Now, you know, it's one thing to say, yeah, it should not have happened. We are fighting a case. I'm sorry we shouldn't have run. That's one part of the story. The other is to turn a blind eye because regretfully, as far as Facebook is concerned, virality is good business. And it doesn't matter what goes viral, whether it's true or half true or fake. That's the sad part of the story. Their very, very business, the, their business model is geared along those lines. And that's the problem. And my last comment is, and this is something I picked up from the documentary, uh, The Social Dilemma. It's only the social media, including Facebook and drug dealers who describe their consumers as users. Hmm. And we've all got addicted. That's Correct. the sad part of the story. Correct. <laughs> but enjoy there is one more irony to this story, isn't it? Uh, uh, while I, I repeat myself, I don't condone what Facebook does. Of course I don't. But just, for the other, just to be the devil's advocate in this particular discussion. While we have parliamentary committee on Facebook, while one of uh, Facebook number two, I guess, uh, Aki Das resigned and all of that happened. Lot of controversy. Mind you, all of that is happening because of whom? Because of two people. One is Kapil Mishra and second is that Raja. Both Kapil Mishra and there, Raja. There is also uh, Anand Kumar Hegde. There is Kumar also Hegde. the case of the uh, Assamese leader who said correct. literally correct. kill Muslims. Correct. 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 There are four or five people who have been the most toxic. The, their, their speeches have been particularly egregious in the hatred that they've spewed out. Correct. There are five people assuming. But these five people are roaming scot-free. There is no parliamentary committee calling them and asking them questions. Nobody calling them and asking them any questions. No police, no law, uh, 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 either questioning them, arresting them or, 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 or putting any kind of case against them. Nothing. Isn't it irony? The entire thing, the heat is faced by Facebook, but the people who actually perpetrated it, they are out. How, what, what kind uh, of justice you know, is that? It's, it's not just ironical. I, I believe it's extremely sad and deplorable that these individuals who have been responsible for disseminating hateful incendiary speech should be walking around scot-free. I completely agree with you. I deposed before the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Information Technology that was headed by Shashi Tharoor, but I'm not in a position to say anything because I, I've been, I, I had to sign, uh, I, so, I mean, I had to sign a, a, an oath. Uh, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on oath not to disclose what happened during the proceedings because I would be breaching parliamentary privilege. However, when I deposed before the Delhi Assemblies Committee on Peace and Harmony headed by Raghav Chadha, Everything, my entire deposition that lasted about 50 minutes is available. It's in the public domain. It was ironically put up on Facebook. It was also put up on YouTube. And I was, I mean, they were very clear. They believe that in the riots that took place in Northeastern Delhi in early this year, February, end of February, and it went on till early March, the misuse of WhatsApp, Facebook, the videos, the pictures, uh, was was absolutely brazen and rampant. The question is, what action will be taken against the perpetrators Correct. of the hate speech? Correct. And this is part of the bigger uh, kind of a problem that we today see in our country. We are being ruled by an authoritarian, majoritarian regime. They will not agree. They they will say, I'm, 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 I'm biased. But I do believe, I mean, these are signs of fascism. Pranja, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's go to your book. You possibly were the first person in India to write about the real face of Facebook. And that's the title of your book too. What made you write this book? What prompted you to write this book? And why, how did you think of this? You know, uh, the book that was published, uh, that was written by Cyril Sam and I and published in April 2019. It's published by me, by the way. I'm the publisher. Okay. I felt that there were too many people in this country who were completely addicted to the social media. 
and, and they were addicted to Facebook and they were addicted uh, to WhatsApp. Now, I, I'm also among those addicts, but I, I take a critical view of that. You know, okay, Facebook is great for getting in touch with old friends and schoolmates with whom you've lost uh, uh, any connection for decades on it. It's, it's a great way to remember people's birthdays. Sure. I mean, obviously, so many people wouldn't be on Facebook or on WhatsApp if it didn't offer certain services. But what people don't realize is that Facebook and other social media platforms are documenting your behavior. They're trying to predict your behavior in the future. And it goes beyond you being a part of what is called uh, a, con I mean, part of, I mean, a confirmation bias, living in an echo chamber where you only hear what you want to hear and, and you disregard what you don't want to hear. It goes beyond that. It's not only closely recording and mapping your behavior, not just the clothes you wear, the songs you like, the films you go to watch, the food you like to eat, but your preferences, your political preferences, your ideological preferences, your in an attempt to be to predict your behavior. You must remember, Sujit, yes. that these are the biggest receivers of the, the, the kind of advertising support they receive is incredible. I mean, uh, the traditional media is way, way behind, whether it be television or print. The bulk of the advertising revenue across the world and also in India is now going to these platforms. The entire traditional business model of the media has been turned upside down. We cannot ignore Facebook to our own peril. We have to understand both sides of the picture. Yes, there is. there are certain services. But in the process, you, the user, you, the consumer, you're also the product. You're also the service because everything about you is being very closely recorded. And there are, in my opinion, terrible consequences for this kind of uh, surveillance capitalism that is, is there across the world. I, I think it has very, very severe negative cons consequences for your children, my children and the future of humankind. Just to make one point, uh, uh, Paranjoy, uh, the spends in India, the advertising spends in India is still focused on mainline television channels. Uh, digital has not yet got that kind of budget uh, in terms of allocation, but that's fine. But the point what you broadly made is absolutely correct and I completely agree to you. Paranjoy, my, my last question to you. How would you see a Facebook? How, how do you think an ideal Facebook should be? I would say an ideal Facebook should be one that is answerable, which takes complaints seriously, which addresses grievances promptly in a transparent manner and stop, you know, this little facade they have. And Google also is part of the thing that we are a tech company, that we are not a media company. Look, you and I spend our time, our money, to generate content for the likes of Facebook. But who pays the writer? Who pays the videographer? Who pays the, 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 the graphic artist? Who pays the singer? Who, who pays the musician? Who pays the composer? The point is this whole revenue model and, and our own notions of what is copyright, what are intellectual property rights, have all turned upside down. It was happening over a period of time. It's completely upside down now. So if the producers of writing, of quality writing, of videos, of audio work, do not, uh, I, mean, I mean, the bulk of the, the revenues that are generated from their work by those who aggregate that content and disseminate that content is garnered by Facebook, the likes of Facebook and Google, then in my opinion, these digital monopolies also have a fairly, I mean, in my opinion, the way they're working is not good for freedom of expression, for generating independent, autonomous, quality, credible information, commentary and analysis. So do you, you think uh, Facebook stops somebody from, uh, uh, say, talking uh, a particular uh, narrative and uh, promote somebody else uh, from 
promote somebody else to talk a particular narrative is that what you think facebook does that is what our book shows those who have the money they get promoted in our country who has the money the ruling dispensation so they have an unfair advantage i mean if you read the article by ozzy.com uh, marusha muzaffar has written how even political advertising how how it works and does not work how large numbers of supporters are spending huge amounts of money on facebook but the, uh, but but the election commission doesn't consider them to be uh, the bjp's expenditure uh, or the bjp's political expenditure for campaigning before the elections so this there's a not just hypocrisy there is a, you know a denial of the reality on the ground i mean the point is you have the big bucks those who have the big bucks they have the armies and, the, and, and not just battalions they have the armies of trolls they have the armies of people uh, the, to control the bots to to try and influence the discourse so it's it's not it's a far from a level playing field hmm. look sujit they, these are not natural monopolies they, this is not uh, uh, you know the, these are private monopolies their their goal is to maximize their profits they, they give a damn about whether it's disinformation or not i go back to the point i made they are only interested in their content going viral what that content contains they don't give a damn in the process if that content is disinformation is hateful well good for facebook unfortunately this is the reality of you know the big bad digital world or, or or let me put it the ugly underbelly of the digital world correct and and you see the what it's done to an entire generation of people what it's done in terms of addiction and what it's done you know uh, i i i sort of conclude my remarks by reminding you of what ravish kumar famously said about whatsapp university large numbers of young people in our country do not have your advantage or my advantage or our privilege of being educated in a quality educational institution by by good teachers they are growing up in whatsapp university they cannot distinguish between opinion and fact what is real what is unreal what is history what is mythology you know so this is really the problem and uh uh uh, uh a oh, relative of mine a young man he came to me some years ago and this is not today i'm talking about something that happened three or four years ago and and he called me he he calls me mosaji i say mosaji uh not all muslims are terrorists but all terrorists are muslim i said how did you get this view i mean before i could mention pragya singh thakur she said no this is on whatsapp so this is the way an entire generation of people have been poisoned their minds have been poisoned and this is my regret and this is why i oppose the way in which these giant digital monopolies are working thank you so much paranjay paranjay let me remind my viewers uh, my viewers could write in to paranjay at gmail.com and get a copy of his book his book is written in english hindi and also marathi so even my marathi audience would uh, would 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 be would be happy to note that you can I, I, i'll sign a copy uh, and i i'm i'm hopeful that they will pay for it also it just <laughs> yeah, cost yeah. 45 rupees correct okay yeah he'll sign the copy for you so that's that's good and thank you so much uh, paranjoy thank you so much for coming down thank you so much for talking to us and it indeed what a pleasure talking to you thank you my pleasure sujit thank you so much for having me again on your program once again let me thank you